Numerical Computation, Chapter 3, Additional Video, Number 3. This is an additional topic for Chapter 3, and you can view this video after you are done with the, the regular videos for Chapter 3, that is, after the videos for Cubic Spline. In this video, we look at a different type of cubic spline called cubic hermit spline. This belongs to a class of spline that is called defective spline function. It is called defective in, for the reason that this spline function actually does not satisfy all the definitions we gave for a standard spline function. A cubic hermit spline interpolates the given data and sometimes if it's given it also interpolates the first derivative so its first derivative is continuous at nodes and if it's not given then it will make a choice but such a cubic spline, the second derivative might be discontinuous. So here is where it does not satisfy the definition of a standard cubic spline. Let's consider a data set that's given. Call it tkyk as usual for k from 0 to n. For the time being, let's assume that the derivatives are also given, denoted by yk prime. So on each interval from tk to tk plus 1, we seek a cubic polynomial, we call it hk of x, such that it interpolates the data and satisfies the first derivative. So hk evaluated at tk would be yk and evaluate at tk plus 1 will be yk plus 1. And the derivative also are required here. So h prime k at tk will be y k prime and at tk plus 1 will be y k plus 1 prime. Recall that in chapter 2 we introduced the cubic hermit basis function for the interval from 0 to 1. So let's review that. Denote the independent variable by x bar, which lies from 0 to 1, we have these basis functions phi 0, phi 1, psi 0, psi 1, where phi 0, phi 1s are the basis functions for the function values, and uh, psi 0, psi 1 are the basis functions for the derivatives. You might want to review that video. And now, if one considers a general interval from tk to tk plus 1, one can do a linear translation and rescaling and rewrite the basis functions. So they are given here. So we have phi 0, phi 1, psi 0 and psi 1 and now we call our variable x because this is a general variable for a general interval. Compare these basis functions to the one on the interval from 0 to 1. We notice a lot of similarities. Now one can also easily verify that these basis functions have the properties for a basis function. 
such that, say for phi zero, if we check its value at tk and tk plus one and its derivative at tk and tk plus one, all of these should be zero except for the function value at tk, which shall be one. Now for the function phi one, it carries a similar property we can view here in the second line. We see these values are all zero except the function value at tk plus one is one and that's where the basis function is defined for. So for psi zero, this is a basis function for the derivative at tk there it takes value 1 and all the others are 0. For the function phi 1, we see that the derivative at tk plus 1 is 1, while the other three values are 0. Now we can assemble the piecewise polynomial function using the basis functions in a standard way. We multiply the basis function by the value that it represents, and then we add them all up. This is called a linear combination. So phi 0 is multiplied by yk, and phi 1 is by yk plus 1, and psi 0 yk prime, and psi 1 yk plus 1 prime. And then we add them all up to form a polynomial, which is a cubic polynomial, and the polynomial is for the interval from tk to tk plus 1. So this would be the polynomial for one to use if the derivatives, the first derivative, are given at all the knots. Then this will be your cubic spline. But very often, one only has the data set tkyk without specifying the derivatives and we still wish to find a hermit cubic hermit spline then there are various ways one can use to approximate the first derivative for example we can approximate it using um, some kind of a central final difference. So we take it to be the slope of the secant line connecting the point to the left, tk minus 1, and the point to the right, tk plus 1. So you connect those two data points and take the slope of that secant line and use it as an approximation to the first derivative at tk. And this computation can be carried out for all the points that are not on the boundary of your data. So for k from 1 to n minus 1. And for the points on the boundary y0 and yn, one cannot use the central final difference because information is only given on one side. So we just use like Euler. So y0 prime would be the secant line connecting the point from t1 to t0, and we take that slope. And for the point tn, we take the slope connecting the point from tn to tn minus 1, and the slope of the secant line will be used as an approximation for the y derivative. So once an approximation for the derivatives are given, we can put them back into the formula on the previous page and form the cubic hermit spline functions. And that's all for this video. Thank you for watching.